You know, I feel just like my old math book from high school. Why did math book look sad during the test? Because it had too many problems. But hey, I have you, and together we can solve any question, even this one. You're presented with unusually looking shapes. Shapes have numbers inside. The middle number in the first shape is 17. Numbers in a circle are 4, 7, and 3. And numbers inside the large circle are 10, 2, and 5. In the second shape, the middle number is 16. The numbers in the small circle are 3, 4, and 1. And the numbers inside the large circle are 12, 4, and 3. Third circle looks a little bit more challenging, just a little, because two numbers are missing. But the numbers in the small circle are 5, 7, and 2. And there are two numbers inside the large circles, 6 and 3. And just like I said, two numbers are missing, and you need to calculate and select them out of four possible choices. Choice A, 14 and 21. Choice B, 16 and 23. Choice C, 18 and 25. And last but not least, choice D, 20 and 27. You feel like you stumbled upon a tough one? Well, you're not alone. But remember, nothing is too challenging for you. You can do anything. Your answer is just waiting to be discovered. Are you ready? Let's move forward and discover the solution together. If you look closely, you can easily recognize the pattern. In fact, outside numbers form clockwise addition expression with the result at 8 o'clock. And inside numbers form multiplication expression with the result at 2 o'clock. And middle number is the sum of results of both calculations for inside and outside numbers. Let's look at the example. If you look closely at the numbers in small circles, 3, 4, and 7, you can easily see that 3 plus 4 equals 7. Let's look at the numbers inside of the larger circle. 5 multiplied by 2 equals 10. You need to move counterclockwise here. 7 and 10 are results of the calculations. 10 plus 7 equals 17, which represents the middle number. Make sure you verify the pattern in the middle shape. But I am going to switch to the third shape, which has two numbers missing. 2 plus 5 equals 7. These are the calculations in small circles. 6 multiplied by 3 equals 18. These are the calculations inside the large circle. And 7 plus 18 equals 25. So the correct answer here is choice C, numbers 18 and 25. It's uh, hard to argue, but figuring out this question is like making a sandwich. There are a lot of layers, and sometimes all you need to do is just take a bite to understand it. But I feel what's easy to understand is that tackling this particular assessment test question sharpens your mind and fuels your love for challenges. You're presented with four expressions, and you need to sort the results of these expressions in descending order. The first expression is one-fifth plus three-fourth. Second expression is square root of one minus one-tenth. Third expression is 1.2 minus one-quarter. And the fourth expression is 0 0.9 multiplied by 1.1. Take a close look at these expressions, do the math, and then select your answer out of four possible choices. Choice A represents descending order as 1, 2, 3, and 4. Choice B represents as 4, 3, 2, 1. Choice C, 2, 3, 4, 1. And last but not least, choice D, 4, 3, 1, 2. Feel like you stumbled upon a tough one? Well, it's easy to understand that. But you're not alone in this journey. Whether you're a problem-solving veteran or a newcomer, I believe in your capabilities. Take a moment to reflect, tap into your creativity, and let's tackle this challenge together. Your answer is just waiting to be discovered. Are you ready with your solution? I hope you are, so let's move forward and compare our versions for the answer. The easiest way to solve this challenge is to complete the calculations and convert the results into the decimal system. In the first expression, to add these fractions, you need a common denominator, which is 20. So 1 fifth becomes 4 20th and 3 fourth becomes 15 20th. 4 20th plus 15 20th equals 19 20th and equals 0 0.95. In the second expression, square root of 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 tenth equals 9 tenth and equals 0 
third expression can be calculated as 1.2 minus 0.25, and the end result of this would be 0.95. The result of multiplication in the fourth expression equals 0.99. Now it's time to do the sorting. Our highest value is 0.99, which is the fourth expression. Then we have two expressions with the same value. The result of expression 3, 0 0.95, equals the result of the expression 1, which is 1920th. And our smallest value on the list is the result of the expression 2, which is 0 0.9. What's especially interesting here is that even though results of expressions 3 and 1 are the same, the correct answer choice is only 1, which is choice D, 4, 3, 1, 2. It's uh, hard to deny, but understanding this particular question is like decoding a secret message. Once you crack it, you feel like a secret agent of knowledge. In fact, patience and mental skills that you're building by practicing this question is the key that unlocks the door to success in the assessment journey as well as in life. You're presented with nine numbers and need to determine all prime numbers in this series. The numbers are 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, and 39. And your answer should be selected out of four possible choices. Choice A, 31 and 39. Choice B, 35 and 37. Choice C, 31 and 37. And last but not least, choice D, 35 and 39. Feel like you're stuck on a challenging problem? Well, you're not alone in facing this hurdle. I feel exactly the same way. But whether you're problem-solving pro or a novice, I trust your skills. Take a brief pause, unleash your creative thinking, and let's confront this obstacle as a team. Your answer is eagerly awaiting your discovery. Are you ready with your solution? I hope you are. So let's move forward and compare our versions of the answer. Let's first understand what the prime numbers are. Prime numbers are natural numbers greater than 1 that can only be evenly divided by 1 in themselves, having no other positive divisors. The sample prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and then you continue going up. What's interesting is that the prime numbers are fundamental in number theory and play a crucial role in various mathematical and cryptographic applications. To solve this challenge, we need to go through each number and check if it's divisible by any smaller numbers. Let's start with number 31 and see if it's divisible by any smaller numbers like 2, 3, 4 and so on. Once you do it, you realize that it's not divisible. We can even try a square root of 31 and only to learn that it's not divisible, which means that it is a prime number. 32 can be divided by 2 and the end result of this is 16, so 32 is not a prime number. Same with 33, it can be divided by 3, 34 can be divided by 2, 35 can be divided by 5, 36 can be divided by 2, 37 is a prime number. You can go through the same chain of exploration as we did for number 31. 38 is not a prime number and 39 is not a prime number. So the correct answer here is choice C, 31 and 37. It's time for you to challenge your brain and show off your skills. I have a problem for you to solve. <laughs> Solving this particular question reminded me playing hide and seek with my house keys before the house showing. It was frustrating, it involved retracing your steps, and the solution was often in the last place you look. You need to calculate total realtor's compensation. For each property realtor sells, she gets 2.5% of the selling price. If she sells more than two properties in two months, she also gets a bonus of 10%. In the last two months, she sold three properties. House one was sold at $110,000. House two was sold for $170,000. And then the condominium, which was sold for $75,000. You need to calculate and select realtor's compensation out of four possible choices. Choice A, $4,562.50. Choice B, $4,762.50. $4 Choice C, $7,562.50, and last but not least, choice D, $9,762.50. Use your brain power to crack this challenge solo, and once ready, make sure to post your answer in comments for my feedback. Thanks for participating, and good luck solving it.
You would have to admit that trying to answer this question is like convincing a cookie to share its chocolate chips. It's a tough cookie, but the reward is sweet. Maybe this tough question is stepping stone toward mastery and understanding, which is rather a sweet reward. We are presented with the challenge where we need to build singular plural business word pairs. One pair is present, manager and managers. For the other words, you need to build the pairs. And the other words are company, index, crisis, and analysis. Do you feel like you stumbled upon a tough one? Well, those are tough words and you are not alone in this journey. I feel exactly the same way. But whether you're a problem-solving veteran or a newcomer, I believe in your capabilities. Take a moment to reflect, tap into your creativity, and let's tackle this challenge together. Your answer is just waiting to be discovered. Are you ready with your solution? I hope you are. So let's move forward and compare our versions of the answer. To better understand the plural versions of the words, let's start with the words definition. Company is a legal entity formed by individuals or shareholders to engage in business activities. And plural version for companies is spelled as C-O-M-P-A-N-I-E-S and is pronounced as companies. Index is a statistical measure that represents the relative change in a group of values or prices. The plural version for indexes is spelled as I-N-D-I-C-E-S and is pronounced as indices. A crisis refers to a critical, unpredictable event or situation that poses a threat to organizations' operations, reputation, or overall well-being. The plural version for crisis is spelled as C-R-I-S-E-S and is pronounced as crisis. And then the last word analysis involves the examination and evaluation of information, data, or elements to gain insights, draw conclusions, and make informed decisions. The plural version for analysis is spelled as A-N-A-L-Y-S-E-S and is pronounced as analysis. With this question, it's pretty clear that explaining data analytics to your grandma is like decoding a complex algorithm with a punchline. The interpretation might be fuzzy, but the laughter is always in the regression. You're presented with four words, and you need to determine the one that is misspelled. The words are choice A, concatenation, choice B, normalization, choice C, aggregation, and last but not least, choice D, duplication. Feel that you stumbled upon a tough task? Well, it's not one of those your grandma questions. I can tell you this. It's a serious data analytics business, but you are not alone in this journey. Whether you're a problem-solving veteran or newcomer, I believe in your capabilities. Take a moment to reflect, tap into your creativity, and let's tackle this challenge together. Your answer is just waiting to be discovered. Are you ready with your answer? Let's move forward so we can sync up the solutions. To be able to best answer this question, let's understand the meaning of each word. Concatenation stands for merging or combining two or more things, such as data sets or strings, into a single entity. Normalization is adjusting and scaling data to a standard format or range for consistent analysis. Aggregation is summarizing or combining data to obtain overall insights or totals. And last but not least, duplication is creating identical copies of data or records within a data set. I am pretty sure you figured it by now. The misspelled word is choice C, aggregation. The correct spelling is A-G-G, two G's here in this word, R-E-G-A-T-I-O-N. <sighs> Let's face it, navigating this question is like convincing a cat to take a bath. A tricky endeavor, but once you soak in the solution, it's a clean success. This assessment might be measuring our ability to handle slippery math expressions. In fact, you are presented with three of those expressions. The first one is 23 multiplied by 23 equals 25. The second one is 25 multiplied by 25 equals 49. And the third one is where you need to find the missing number. The expression is 27 by 27, and the result of it you need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 64. 
choice B, 72, choice C, 76, and last but not least, choice D, 81. Feeling a bit stuck? Well, guess what? You're not alone. I feel exactly the same way. But I'm the firm believer that you've got this. Whether you're a seasoned problem solver or just starting out, I know you can do it. Take a deep breath, approach it with creativity, and let's navigate through this challenge together. Your breakthrough is just around the corner. Are you ready with your solution? Well, or at least excited about this mental workout. Let's tackle this puzzle and explore the complexities together. And don't forget to share your brilliance, insight, in comments. Your solution might be just the breakthrough we need. Did I warn you that this expression is slippery? In the typical world, 23 multiplied by 23 equals 529. But to solve this problem, we need to think out of the box. And instead of using traditional math, you need to sum up the digits and multiply the result of the sum operation. Let's look at the example. For example, 23 by 23 would be 2 plus 3 in parentheses multiplied by 2 plus 3 would be 5 multiplied by 5 and the result of this would be 25. The second expression would be 2 plus 5 in parentheses multiplied by 2 plus 5 in parentheses would be equal 7 by 7 would be equal 49. So the missing number could be calculated as 2 plus 7 multiplied by 2 plus 7 which would be equal 9 multiplied by 9 or 9 squared and would be equal to 81. So the correct answer here is choice D, 81. I gotta admit, if I would ever have to face these types of problems on the assessment test, I would need to bring the compass with me. And you know why? Because navigating through these price calculations felt like exploring a maze. Don't believe me? See for yourself. As a pricing manager for Echo Essence AgriCare Inc., Michaela purchased 160 kilograms of fertilizer at 200 US dollars per metric ton, and she is planning to mix it with 200 kilograms of fertilizer she already had purchased at 400 US dollars per metric ton. What should be the target price for the mixture if she is targeting 20% profit? You need to calculate and select the final price out of four possible choices. Choice A, $153.60. Choice B, $156.20. Choice C, $164.80. And last but not least, choice D, $172.40. Feeling stuck? No worries. It's easy to understand why you would be stuck with these types of problems. But whether you're a pro or newcomer, I trust that you can conquer this challenge. Remember, time is your friend, and a little outside of the box thinking goes a long way. You've got this. Take your time, get creative, and let's crack this problem together. Are you ready? Let's navigate the complexity of this question together and exchange solutions in the end. These types of problems can definitely be solved in multiple different ways. Make sure to post your unique way in comments so we can all learn. Let's start by looking at the term US dollar per MT which refers to United States dollar per metric ton. This is the pricing convention, which is widely used in international trade, since it provides a standardized and easily comparable measure for the cost of fertilizer on a weighted basis. Once we understand what we're dealing with here, our first step would be to determine the cost. For the first fertilizer, the cost would be 160 kilograms multiplied by 200 divided by metric ton, which is 1,000 kilograms which would be equal to $32. For the second fertilizer, Michaela spent $96, which is calculated as 240 kilograms multiplied by 400 and divided by metric ton, which is the 1,000 kilograms, which equals to 96. So the total spent for both fertilizer would be $32 plus $96, which is equal $128. The best way to add 20% profit is to understand that 20% profit is equals 120% of the original cost, which means that the target price can be calculated as 128 multiplied by 1.2, and the end result of this would be 153. So Michaela should aim to sell the mixture for $153.60 per metric ton to make a 20% profit. And the correct answer here is choice A, $153.60. Well, guess what? Your time to radiate has arrived. I have full confidence that you will shine with your brilliance right now by solving this challenge. 
you are presented with three triangles. Triangles have numbers inside. The first triangle has number 1 in the middle and numbers 2, 9 and 3 on the sides. Second triangle has number 2 in the middle and numbers 3, 7 and 1 on the sides. And then the third triangle has number 4 in the middle, numbers 7 and 5 on the sides, and in the bottom right corner it has the missing number, which you need to calculate and select out of 4 possible choices. Choice A, 15. Choice B, 17. Choice C, 19. And last but not least, choice D, 21. Crack this challenge on your own and then share your solution in comments. I'm looking forward to discussing your answer and providing some feedback. Thanks for getting involved and good luck on this intriguing challenge. Let's dive into the world of letters with this amazingly tricky question that not only evaluates your English alphabet knowledge, but also tests your analytical skills and your strategies for tackling challenges effectively. You're presented with 3x3 three three matrix. The matrix has letters inside. The first row has letters A, B, and D. The second row has letters B, D, and F. And then the third row has letters D, F, and then comes the missing letter, which you need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, H. Choice B, D. Choice C, F. And last but not least, choice D, K. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. I mentioned that this question is a little tricky, so let me give you a hint. Take a close look and consider why would some boxes, some squares in the matrix would be in gray and some would be in white. Was it helpful? I hope it was. I've unlocked my answer and I'm excited to unveil some hints for you to share the answer. Let's explore the solution together. And obviously, if you've came up with the different and more creative alternative solution or tips how to solve these types of challenges effectively, make sure to post them in comments. To answer this question correctly, let's look at our matrix from a little different dimension. Each letter here corresponds to a specific place in the alphabet, which can be represented by the number. For example, letter A equals 1, letter B 2, C 3, and etc. If we follow this logic, we can replace all letters in all three rows with the numbers. So for the first row, the numbers will be 1, 2, and 4. For the second row, the numbers would be 2, 4, and 6. And for the third row, the numbers will be 4 and 6 and that would be the missing number. The next step is to determine what's happening with the numbers and how to calculate the missing number. Remember I gave you a hint? Hope you figured it out because numbers in the white squares here are the result of addition of numbers in the gray squares. Let's look at the example. For example, 2 plus 2 equals 4. 4 plus 2 equals 6. This is how the numbers in the white squares of the second row are calculated. 2 plus 4 equals 6. This is the result of the calculation in the third row, which would mean that the missing number on the intersection of 4 and 4 will be calculated as addition of 4 plus 4, which would be equal to 8. So the correct answer here is choice A, H, because H is the letter that corresponds to the number 8. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and to pass any test. If the content of this video was helpful, please make sure to click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this, and when you tell us, we will deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description and comments of this video. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials related to this topic. I really appreciate your endorsement, support and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.